Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. And today we got a newest Nick Crowley video and this is YouTube's Darkest Mystery featuring Nexpo. Nick Crowley and Nexpo in one video, that is what I'm talking about. Now, uh, for everyone, um, in case anyone would think, if I start coughing, it is extremely hard in my place. I'm still not allowed to put my AC in for some reason. Uh, so until I get it put in, that is way hot in here. So if I start coughing now because of the heat, I apologize. Sometimes causes me to cough. But we don't do this. This is YouTube's Darkest Mystery feature next bow. Ladies and gentlemen, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment thing down below. If you'd like to help the channel out with a donation, you can leave a super thanks or a link to my PayPal in the description. Let's go. <laughs> YouTube is in unusual place. For the past five years, tracking down its most disturbed and mysterious content has become an obsession for me. That search has led me down rabbit holes and into pockets of the internet that, for better or worse, and usually for worse if I'm being honest, have left a permanent impact on me. But recently, I was asked if any one case stood out above the rest. What was the quote-unquote best of the worst? And I was surprised at how easily an answer came to me. It was a story that started in Fiji, in the back seat of a taxi cab. Inside, a woman grabs her seatbelt from the top left corner of her seat and pulls down, waiting to hear a click. But as she does so, her hand brushes against a familiar feeling object. It was a cell phone, presumably left by the rider before her. For the student, times were tough, and she was just barely making ends meet, so she quietly made the decision to slide the phone into her pocket before the cab driver could notice. Shortly after, she was dropped off at home, where with a mix of nervous- Hold on, she st so this all started with her stealing a cell phone. She stole a phone. What a start already to this story. Business and excitement, she slid the device's lock screen. To her surprise, it was unlocked. And without hesitation, she began to comb through its contents, leading her first to the phone's camera roll, where she found what looked to be a peaceful video of the ocean, eagerly pressing play to see what secrets the clip might hold. Over the course of the next 10 minutes and 26 seconds, she would witness perhaps the most gruesome video she had ever laid eyes on. The images burning into her mind frame by frame, never to be forgotten. The following day, she would upload the same video to YouTube, marking the start of an internet mystery whose trail was as vast as the ocean itself, and whose contents immediately made it one of the most mysterious videos to ever appear on YouTube. Has he not done a video on this up until this point? Because that's shocking to me. Before we dive deeper into this rap- Okay, I'm not watching anything about debt solution. I'm perfectly fine right now. I ain't in no damn debt. Yet. Because if I might decide to go to college, that, that will definitely change. The video went live on August 17th, 2014 on an unknown channel called Common King Savu. It opens with a shot of the ocean, filmed with what appears to be the grainy camera of an old cell phone. We see ships floating and hear the voices of men yelling in various languages, later to be decoded as Mandarin, Vietnamese, and potentially even Taiwanese. And while translating their words is difficult, their sentiment is easy to understand. Something had grabbed the men's attention. Something in the water. <laughs> the camera pans around as if it's looking for that something, while showing the vast, deep blue waters surrounding their ship. They were in the middle of nowhere, clearly miles and miles away from any sign of humanity. Suddenly, the commotion intensifies as the cameraman makes a dash for the opposite side of the ship, as finally he sees it. How are you? It was a man, warily treading water. The cameraman yells to him in English, How are you? To which the swimmer raises his hands, signifying his desperate need for help. 
it started to become clear that this video was going to be of some sort of rescue attempt. Somehow, that man had ended up in the water and clearly needed to be saved. And this far out at sea, it seemed to be a miracle that these ships had reached him in time. But within this clip, nothing is what it seems. As rather than a- Oh, I know what this clip is. I just clicked on what this video is. I've seen this video before. Oh, this, I, I've never, I don't know the into details of it, but I've seen this, I know what this video is now. This is insane. Oh, this is insane what happens here. This is just evil at its finest. A life preserver being tossed to the man, or maybe even a rope getting thrown his way. A gunshot rings out. A shot aimed directly at the man in the water. The shot misses just inches above his head, only to be followed by another shot, and another, until finally the fourth try connects. The bullet piercing the man's head and turning the sea around him an unnatural shade of red. He was dead in an instant. Though the recording kept going, and so did the gunshots. <laughs> The camera pans across the waves, now revealing two more men in the water, clinging to what appears to be the wreckage of their boat, a boat that somehow had been destroyed. And before long, one of them was struck too, leaving the other man hanging onto the debris as he silently watches his friend's body float lifelessly past him. He held on for nearly four minutes, not saying a word, not fighting back, just holding on, until finally, he too was executed. Understandably, the ordeal proved too much for the cameraman to handle, as at this point he just couldn't control an outburst. But not in any sort of emotional way that one might expect, as instead... <laughs> he couldn't hold back his laughter. This is a crew sh this is a ship of evil bastards. These are all evil-ass individuals. The enjoyment they have in killing these innocent people are pure, pure, pure evil. This is, there's no defending it. It's just pure evil. Even as a fourth swimmer was found and also executed, the laughs and the cheers from the people on board just kept on coming. Hello? Hi. <laughs> there was no sign of remorse for the killings, only celebration. And at the end of the video, the crew even posed for photos. <laughs> Some of them joining arms together while others took selfies, with those listless bodies floating in the background. Over the course of the clip, 63 shots had been fired at four men in the ocean, none of whom survived the encounter. The video would be kept on YouTube for only three days under the title Fishing Vessel Fijian Crew Getting Shots Outside Fiji Waters, providing the first and really the only bit of context for the clip, as when people began to dig deeper to find out what exactly they had just watched, they found something unusual. They found... nothing. There was no other information about the event. There was no news articles. There were no police reports. There was quite literally nothing. This video was seemingly the first ever mention of this incident on the internet. Now this might make sense if it had happened in the days surrounding the upload, but when digging into the video's metadata, it was revealed that not only was this not true, but that the video had actually been filmed a whole two years prior in 2012, meaning that for two full years, whatever this event was went unseen and unreported. Of course, there's four people at the bottom of the ocean. Who's going to report it? Clearly everyone's fine with it and the people are dead. Who are you gonna, who's gonna report it? Given its alleged Fijian ties, their government would be the first to investigate in a process that only took about a day, as they immediately determined that the fishermen seen in this footage were not actually Fijian, and nor were the shooters. In fact, the waters didn't even match theirs either. And so, with the video having no ties to their country, they immediately dropped the case. For any others trying to find more information, things were bleak as they had no idea where the incident took place, who the victims were, who the shooters were, the identity of the ships, or even the motivation behind the killings. 
They tried to find out who these victims were by searching every single accessible missing persons database from all across the world. They then tried to find cases of missing ships or reports of shootings at sea, only to reach the same results. Despite seeing it with our own eyes, it was as if these killings never even happened. With intrigue building around the clip, a few larger news agencies would pick up the story, most of them admitting that they too couldn't find any noteworthy information on anything involving the case. And with the facts nearly impossible to come by, they instead focused on the more human questions surrounding the ordeal. Why? What had motivated the men on this ship to open fire on these helpless people? And given the media climate at the time, a reason was quickly brought forward. These are the pirates of Somalia, holding the world's shipping industry to ransom. U.S. officials say they are working with other countries to deal with the lawlessness they say is the root cause of the piracy. We have to ensure that those who commit acts of piracy are held accountable. The high seas are often a lawless place, and of all the criminal groups that can be found at sea, by far the most notorious at this time were Somali pirates, with it quickly being assumed that the men seen in the water were just that. Pirates that had planned to overthrow the ship, yet were somehow stopped, leading to their slow motion execution. This honestly explains a lot. No, it doesn't. No, see, because here's the reason that wouldn't work for me. There is no sign that they have done anything. There's no weapons. They have no way to defend themselves. They don't try to defend themselves. It's almost like there's nothing to the ship. There's nothing to them. They're just four guys on a boat. You clearly know they're not going to be... Well, the one, the one dude hanging on for four minutes clearly knew he wasn't going to be saved. So... Like why the crime was never reported and why the crew seemed to be celebrating their killing. As after all, this would mean that they had just survived a pirate attack from a group that likely would have done much worse to them. Because of these reports, the discourse surrounding the footage quickly went from shock to, in many instances, support. With one user writing, Kill those f***ing pirates. They would not hesitate to kill you if they had the chance. How does it feel, you f***ing scums? And while not everyone held such strong emotions, for most, it was settled. This was a case of self-defense, nope. albeit a heartless one. Nope. Though as the clip began to slip from the headlines, questions began to arise that for a select few weren't so easy to ignore. For starters, in the footage we see four large boats in the area, which would make one wonder why such a small pirate group would choose to attack a ship that had reinforcements literally right next to it. It almost seemed like a suicide mission. And on top of this, through the debris, you can clearly see that the boat was wooden, with it later being identified as a dhow a slow-moving fishing vessel almost exclusively used in Arab countries. Given its speed and fragile wooden structure, this would likely be the last choice for many pirates. So not only did this not make sense from an attack standpoint, but the country of origin of this boat seemingly didn't match either. And to make this even stranger, the boat clearly had a flag attached to it. And though it couldn't be definitively identified, flying the flag of a country is almost unheard of for Somali pirates it's safe to say that the pirate theory wasn't as concrete as many had assumed. No. And this only becomes more evident the further we dig into the video, with one of the most glaring discrepancies being the demeanor of the crew. <laughs> it's obvious that they weren't fearing for their lives at all during this attack. In fact, their words show just how much they were enjoying it, with some people even shouting for the camera to get a better angle and encouraging the gunmen to keep shooting. And perhaps even more importantly, at no point do we see any weapons or any form of retaliation from the men floating in the water. Nope. It didn't look or sound like a fight. It appears more as a straight-up attack. And most chillingly of all, one of the swimmers can faintly be heard yelling, No Somali. No pirate. Despite these glaring gaps... To everyone, it does not... It because here's what I think happened here. This is what happened. This is what the pirate thing is what everyone went with. You can make sense of it. A pirate showed up in the ship. They felt they had to take it out and kill everyone involved. That's the only way they would be saved. So that's what they did. That, never mind. That's how they justified it. They're like, okay, that explains why they're killing. Because the other thought of, four, of a ship of people just heartlessly killing people in sea, maybe it was just too hard for them to fathom. 
Years would pass following the video's upload, with little in the way of new reported information. However, there were a select few who made it their mission to uncover the truth behind the footage, one sliver at a time. Most notably, a private investigator named Karsten von Hoslin picked up the case and documented his journey on a show called Lawless Oceans. He started his investigation by pinpointing the ship scene in the- So wait, he had a whole series just dedicated to solving this case? Was it just this case? That's amazing! ...footage, identifying them as the Chun-E-217, the Chun-E-628, the Lao yuan yu 99 and finally, the Ping-Shin-101, the boat that pulled the trigger. These ships were all tuna longliners operating out of Taiwan, where fishing is one of their economy's biggest industries. But what makes Taiwanese fishing so unique is that their ships operate almost exclusively in international waters, where unlawful activity runs rampant. This includes illegal fishing, long work hours for employees, abuse, and in some cases, even murder. As on the high seas, far away from the watchful eyes of the law, you can get away with almost anything, which explains why this crime had gone undetected for so long. And with the Ping Shin 101 being the unquestioned killer, that's where the investigation would quickly be focused. The history of this boat reveals a few interesting notes. For starters, it was issued an international yellow card for aggressive behavior years before, though nothing is really known about the incident that led to this decision. But what we do know is that in 2010, the ship had made an insurance claim citing that it collided with a smaller vessel, causing some minor damages. And though the captain claimed that this was an accident, the footage said otherwise. The, sh the captain drove the, the, the fucking thing right into it. Okay. Yeah, that's fucking smart. Oh, Somehow, this exact same incident just so happened to be captured by a man sailing aboard the Ping Shin 101. The footage shows the longliner aggressively pursuing a smaller fishing boat, while the crew aboard laughs and cheers on, just as they did in the other video. Yeah, so so. <laughs> only this time, they aren't the only aggressors, as we can see three other ships joining in as well. The exact same three ships shown in that original video. This is like just a gang of people, a gang of boats ganging up on. Small shift, that doesn't mind no fucking business. Eventually, the Ping Shin rams the vessel, causing it to break down before the video ends abruptly. It's unknown what happened to the ship from here, however, many have posited that its crew was met with the same fate as the other victims of the Ping Shin 101. Much like the Sea Slaughter video, it's unknown why the ship was even attacked to begin with. This clearly wasn't a Somali boat, and again, at no point did we see any sort of weapon or any sort of combativeness coming from that ship. It seemed to be simply another fishing vessel. But what else is so intriguing about this video is that the fleet of ships were equally as involved, actively working to corral and trap the boat. And given their proximity to the murdered swimmers in the first video, perhaps they were all involved in that slaying too. Almost as if these ships were part of a gang, with the Ping Shin 101 as its leader. With all these discoveries, finding this ship was going to be the key to the investigation, as having documented its aggressive history, finding it became everything for investigators. But whereas the search for information had thus far been difficult, the search for the Ping Shin 101 was impossible. In July of 2014, a cargo ship sailing in the Indian Ocean named the Sam Tiger received an SOS call from a nearby ship. When they arrived on the scene, they saw the Ping Shin 101 on fire and sinking alone in the ocean. Upon the crew's rescue, it was stated that there had been some sort of explosion on board and that the engine room had been completely flooded, causing the ship to go down, leaving it burned to a crisp at the bottom of the ocean, just months before the video would be exposed to the public. The ship and all of the evidence that it might hold were gone, and gone under suspicious circumstances as well. Allegedly, when asked about what happened that night, fishermen on board gave varying testimonies that didn't seem to line up, 
with no one being able to offer any sort of cause for the explosion, and some stating that they didn't even hear an explosion as well. With the story of the flooded engine room seeming off too, considering that it had a watertight door that could have easily been closed, thus stopping the sinking. Today, multiple ship experts so it, they destroyed the ship to make it so the evidence disappeared. That's obvious. To have reviewed the case, believe that the ship was sunk intentionally. Yeah. But whether this was for insurance purposes or to conceal some sort of evidence is unknown. But the both. It's probably both. The timing of it all might hint at the latter. As crushing as this was for the investigation, there still was hope. As even though the ship was no longer around, the crew certainly was. Their identities were found after a few had posted images of themselves onto Facebook aboard the Pink Shin 101. And after reaching out to many of these crew members, the investigator Karsten van Hoslin found a few who were actually willing to speak with him. And so, individually, they would be asked about the murders at sea. And one by one, they began to recount their experiences. Only, as they began to talk, there was something strange about their story. Something that didn't match the video at all. It was the time of day with each of the men noting that the killings had taken place at nighttime, and that it was completely dark out when the shootings occurred. Are they unaware that they were filmed? It feels like all of them just became unaware of the film. Like, because if you know you're being video recorded, you obviously are going to... Or maybe they just don't actually realize one of them forgot, like, don't have the tape. They just think maybe, oh, they, they found the ship and they think a murders have taken place. And, I, and they're just like, no, no, it happened to see, we couldn't see anything, we were just kind of shooting, make it. They're like, you know we're on tape, right? Like, you know we have the footage. This made no sense to the investigator until he realized something. The story that they were sharing was not the one portrayed in this video, and instead, it was an entirely different killing, and one that was far, far more gruesome. It happened that very same year in- Next ball! I was waiting to hear your beautiful dark voice. 2012. Not even a week before the event- Beautiful dark voice sounded way weirder than I thought it'd be. But, my bad. ...scene in the video. With this incident, no cameras were rolling. Instead, the story only lives through the accounts of the deckhands who watched it all transpire. In was the dead of night, as the Ping Shin 101 floated across the waters of the Indian Ocean, accompanied by three other ships in its group. As the sailors finally settled in for a precious few hours of sleep, the quiet of the night was shattered by the captain yelling across the intercom. There was a ship approaching on the horizon, and according to the captain, that ship was carrying pirates. The men knew what this meant as they scrambled to get dressed and headed to the deck where the group of four boats had already begun their offensive measures. Yet, as they watched on, they saw that the ship was silent. It wasn't provoking in any way and rather was minding its own business, appearing to be on none other than a standard fishing expedition. On its dimly lit deck, a group of men could be seen standing watch and none of them were armed. Then, noticing that they were in danger, the ship attempted to turn and flee, but it was too late. They had already been labeled a threat by merely being in this fleet's eyeline. Quickly, the Ping Shin 101 caught up with the vessel and struck its side, causing the boat to split in half and throwing its occupants into the dark waters. The light on board flickered, then shut off, covering the wreckage in a blanket of black leaving nothing but the sound of splashing, yelling, and the faint putter of their engines. That is, until the water turns bright. As a powerful spotlight on board the Ping Shen beams into the sea, illuminating one swimmer struggling in the water. The captain calls over his armed security guard and gives the order to open fire. Okay, so I've now figured it out. Okay, so I, I was wondering because someone's in the comments why the off? Why only the captain was arrested? Because to they probably made the argument for everyone else that they were just doing what they were told on the ship. They were told there was a threat. They were told to act like a, that. They treat like it's a threat. And when pirates get on your ship, you just take them out because they'll take you out if you don't take them out. So they were treated. Uh, they were just doing what they were told. 
while the captain knew this was a completely def not a threat defenseless ship and they just decided they were going to plow through it. So I get why. Okay, I figured that. I get why now. The guard looks back nervously, explaining that he would need to contact his officers at home and get approval to shoot this man, given that the swimmer was not fighting back and had not acted aggressively in the first place. However, to the captain, this didn't matter, and he insisted that the guard open fire anyway. And so, with shaky hands, he raised his weapon and pointed it towards the helpless man, only to pause when he heard a faint cry. It was the supposed pirate in his sights, speaking a language that the Arab security guard knew. And just like the incident that started it all, the swimmer yells, No Somali. In that moment, the realization set in that they had just attacked an innocent fishing vessel, causing the guard to immediately lower his weapon, only for it to be ripped from his hands by the captain. His mind was already made up, and so he took aim and fired the gun himself. Yeah, so this captain is evil. The 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 guard himself, he was like, oh, they're not a threat. He put the weapon down. The guard's like, God damn it, he's not doing anything. That's threat enough to me. He shoots the fucking guy. This guy, this this captain is evil. Opening up the door to Carnage. That night, the Ping Shin 101 and its surrounding boats would use their spotlights to scan the water for the rest of the ship's occupants. And every time they found one, they would be shot on sight. Scan. Shoot. Scan. Shoot. Over and over again. This went on all night. And by the morning, the crew had witnessed the drawn-out execution of approximately 22 men. The stories from these crew members added a whole new layer to this case. These ships were targeting innocent fishing boats and slaughtering people at sea for essentially no reason at all, and somehow all of this information had never once reached the public and only came to light as a result of a single YouTube video. And the discoveries didn't stop there. As investigators were combing through the net for details on the Ping Shin, they found another video. A video depicting the very same slaughter as that original incident. Only this recording was taken from one of the nearby ships. The clip shows exactly what was missing from that initial footage, the build up to the men ending up in the water, as we can see the Dao still intact and being chased down by the fleet. No weapons are ever used by the victims even as their ship begins to break down, which in turn forces them to jump into the water where the executions begin. But that's not the only thing this footage shows, as this angle gives us a better idea of the scope of these murders. It wasn't just four men that went into the water. No, in the footage you can see many, many more. Their heads bobbing up and down as they await the end of their lives. And though it's hard to tell for sure, it appears that the number of victims was at least triple what we initially believed. With 12 people ending up in the water, a number corroborated by the crew themselves during questioning, who stated that all the shootings were done by either their captain, the armed guards, or even the other ships. In only a week's time, this fleet had killed upwards of 35 innocent people with their merciless attacks. And given the ship's history of violence and its seemingly crazed captain, there's no telling how many others they had taken too. With so many players involved in this situation, it's hard to pin the blame on any one person for these killings. Everybody aboard all had a hand in it. But it makes the most sense to start at the top, with the leader of the fleet and the captain of the Ping Shin 101. And given the accounts of the crew members, his identity would finally be revealed. His name is Captain Wang Feng Yu, or as he was more commonly called on the high seas, Captain Hoodlum. According to his crew, this captain was an angry man, crazy even, who made his points by hitting and beating, choosing violence above anything else, which was perhaps done to make up for his inexperience as a captain, given that he was only 35 years old, which was considered very young for that role. 
the revelation of his identity led to him being tracked down and questioned for his crimes, to which he gave a reason for each and every attack, proclaiming that these ships were pirates and that they were threatening him, even stating that one of the men had tried to board their ship on the day of that infamous slaughter. But upon further questioning, his defense fell apart. His actions were impossible to defend, and whether he even knew it or not, he was responsible for the deaths of countless innocent men, including many by his own hand. As a result, Wang Feng Yu was put on trial for his crimes committed in international waters, which is considered extremely rare for cases like this, with the Taiwanese government charging him for the four murders shown in the video, as these were the only ones that they could verify, due to the other story having literally no record of having even happened. You That's fair. As much as people hate it, and they do, because 35 men, though 22, 20 men, right? There's 35 in total, I think someone said. 20 men being murdered. All we have is their say. Their, their version of events. But no evidence to back it. So I can understand why they, as much as it fucking sucks, I can understand why they couldn't arrest, charge him on those. Because how do you charge someone on a crime you can't prove happened? He was sentenced to 26 years in prison, which after an appeal would be reduced to just 13. Of all the other ships and men involved, no others would be charged along with him, making this the only form of justice to come from the deaths of all these men, supposedly mistaken for pirates. But as the case now winds down to a close, and we near the end of this rabbit hole, we're still left to wonder about those victims. If not pirates, then who were they? Well, this was actually something explored on the Lawless Ocean show, with the investigation taking them all the way to a little-known port in Iran called Kanarak. There, Van Hosen managed to track down records of two ships that had been lost to sea in 2012, that had just so happened to match the description of the ones that the Pink Shin and their group had attacked. But despite their disappearances, they were never mentioned to law enforcement, and they were never mentioned across any sort of media outlets, even the local ones. Which actually makes sense, as when you start to dig into the background of these boats, it becomes clear that they weren't just fishing, and rather, they were more than likely carrying drugs. Oh. As it turns out, it was commonplace for vessels like this in that area to carry with them supplies of heroin that they would then transport across the ocean, and what makes Oh my god, my man, they shot drug boats. They shot drug trafficking boats. I don't even think they knew that. They, p they probably would have sold them drugs if they wanted something. Goddamn. What makes this so crazy is that when you watch the first video back, you can see little packages floating in the water that appear almost exactly like large bags of heroin. Oh. As a result, these ships were likely trying to be extra covert and not draw any sort of attention as getting in an altercation could easily end up with their dark secret being exposed, meaning that there was likely no way that they were threatening the Ping Shin or any of the vessels seen in this group. It just wouldn't make any sense. However, within this context, it's hard to describe these people as being completely innocent, but did this really warrant such a brutal execution? Fair. You can't really call them vic- you can't- they're not innocent but they're still defenseless victims. They still got brutally massacred for no reason other than the captain's enjoyment. And it's important to note too that the murderous fleet almost certainly didn't expect them to be drug carriers. And given that the Pink Shin and its fleet had no ties to the drug world, it's apparent that these drugs had nothing to do with the killings. It was just a strange coincidence, leaving us still without a true motive. Following this lead, Van Hosen visited a nearby village where many of the fallen crew members' families were living, and there they discovered innumerable people missing their fathers, husbands, children, all of whom had gone to sea never to return, while in truth, these families had no idea just how savagely their loved ones had been killed. Though this discovery makes the case a bit more morally murky, it at least provides an answer to one of the most glaring questions of who these victims were, as though they were never named specifically, it's clear now at least where they came from. The rabbit hole this video carries with it is almost unimaginable. Imagine if we had just accepted the theory that this was an isolated pirate attack. We would never have known the true story behind this fleet and the true number of their victims and justice would have never been served, even if said justice wasn't as satisfying as many had hoped. 
But of all the twists and turns of this case, there was somehow one more that remained. As oddly enough, the entire story of this video making its way onto YouTube didn't exactly happen as it was first described. Makes sense. We started this case with the story of the video's uploader discovering the clip on a cell phone found in a taxi cab in- I am not- Excuse me, YouTube, I don't appreciate that. I am not surprised that this is not a case because it sounds so bad because it starts off with a phone theft. And there's one thing that ain't rarely gonna be left in a cab, it's a cell phone. Fiji. But she would actually later go on to retract this claim once investigators questioned her further. Instead, she had stated that she had been sent the footage by someone else and felt compelled to share it with the world to warn others of what was really happening out there on the high seas. She even claimed that she knew it would be potentially dangerous posting this video, not only for her, but for the anonymous person she sent it to. And so, she made up the story to essentially absolve them from any involvement. This means that the clip wasn't found on the cell phone of whoever had recorded it, and instead, it had been circulating. What makes this even more fascinating is that this allowed investigators to track down where the video actually came from, or at least how it had gotten to the island of Fiji, and how it had gotten to this phone in particular. And when doing so, all roads led them to a man who had been an avid collector, and possibly distributor, of so-called snuff films. What? And within his devices, these investigators found hundreds of other disturbing videos of brutal killings, making it almost certain that this video was originally sold as a snuff film, and even bringing up the question of whether or not these killings had been done for that sole purpose. This actually lines up quite well with how the men were acting in the video, gloating for the camera and directing the cameraman on where to go, yelling at him to film it all. And given that we don't really have a solid motive for this event, perhaps it was done for this video specifically. As after all, these workers at sea are notoriously underpaid, and so a video like this would be worth much more than anyone on board was used to making. This is, however, impossible to prove, and though it may have played a role in what was happening that day, it seems more conclusive to say that this was a case of a crazed captain who likely just had a crippling fear of pirates, with his paranoia leading to him being overprotective of his ship and the fleet around him. With this behavior leading to the incidents that, had it not been for a single YouTube video, would have basically never happened, existing instead only as Fisherman's Tale. And I have to wonder if this could be the case for even more incidents out there at sea, not only for the Pingshin 101 and its fleet, but across the entire high seas. How many more killings have gone unnoticed? Killings that we'll likely never know about, until the next gruesome video finds its way to our screens. I want to give a massive thank you to a few people. Firstly, Nexpo for jumping on this video. You guys definitely already know this, but he has an amazing channel. And if you don't, definitely go check it out. And him and I actually have a ghost hunting channel that we do on the side where we go on all sorts of crazy adventures. So if you guys want to check it out, definitely give it a watch. And also, I want to send a shout out to those who did incredible work researching this case, especially Karsten von Hoslin, whose show I highly recommend and will link below, as well as the Outlaw Ocean Project, TM Tracking, and Sarah Tori, who did an amazing write-up with lots and lots more information, which I've also linked below. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this reaction. Let me know what you think of this insane story in the comments. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.